Good morning. I am calling to order our regularly scheduled meeting of Committee of the Whole. My name is Elizabeth Glidden. and I'm the chair of this committee. And I am joined today by Council Members Reich, Bender, Quincy, Rosami, Goodman, Fry, and Palmasano. And we are a quorum of the committee. We have one discussion item today. It is referred by the mayor's office, although um, I think we are going to have the presence of our city coordinator as well, because this will be something that is overseen by the city coordinator's office. And it is uh, proposed uh, acceptance of an innovation delivery team grant. I will just note that because of timing issues, and I hope that we hear more about that, this has already gone through two committees. Um, it has gone through uh, executive committee specifically relating to the uh, director position for this proposed innovation delivery team. And then it has also made its way through ways and means, although we did not have discussion of the item in that committee. So uh, I believe Mr. Stiles, uh, the mayor's chief of staff is here and will make the presentation and then we will uh, take any questions. Uh, good morning, uh, uh, Chair Glidden and uh, council members. Thank you for the opportunity to present here today. Um, I, and of course, on behalf of the mayor's office, uh, we recommend that you accept the uh, grant award from Bloomberg Philanthropies for $900,000 a year for up to three years for the establishment of an innovation delivery team, that you authorize officials to enter into a three-year agreement with Bloomberg Philanthropies and to increase the 2015 appropriation and revenue budgets for the city coordinator's department by $900,000. Those are the formal actions that, that we're recommending that you take today. Uh, you also have in this council cycle a separate action to approve a position referred to you by the executive committee to create an innovation uh, delivery director in the uh, coordinator's office. That's uh, technically uh, what we're asking you to do. Um, I'm just really pleased to be here to uh, talk about uh, what this grant is, how it came to our attention, how we were invited to apply, what we applied for, uh, what it means that we get, and what it means that we get to do. Um, and I just want to really highlight that this is uh, a big deal. Um, this is a, um, uh, first of all, we, uh, the Bloomberg Philanthropies, this is the second round of the Bloomberg Philanthropies Mayor's Innovation uh, Delivery Grant. The first round is a three, this is again, it's a three year grant. The first round started in 2011, and only five cities were. Uh, awarded uh, this uh, grant. They were, you can see on your RCA, Chicago, Atlanta, Memphis, New Orleans, and Louisville, uh, and uh, used, uh, I guess, used the grant to, to really uh, innovate in a variety of fronts that were uh, of core importance to them. For example, uh, in Chicago, uh, licensing time for businesses, uh, small businesses and restaurants in Atlanta to deal with chronic homelessness, in Memphis to decrease retail vacancy rates, in New Orleans to reduce the murder rate, which was the highest in the country at that time, uh, and so on. Uh, the, the innovation delivery grant, and just to pause on this for um, a minute, uh, is essentially a, a, a consulting team that is entirely at our disposition to help us really uh, dig deep into our data in a very data-driven, uh, fact-based way and come up with innovation solutions, innovative solutions to problems that that simply, I mean, for one, for over a year or excuse me, a decade of budget cuts, we've reduced our own capacity necessarily to do this kind of work in house. And so this is really an opportunity to have some of the um, the best minds in the business help us, uh, as they say, unlock the creativity that already exists within city government. Um, I'm just going to read a little bit here from the grant requirements of the. Uh, the uh, innovation delivery grant, because I think that they're really quite interesting. Uh, it says here, cities are uniquely able to innovate and transform citizens' lives, but many face barriers to developing and implementing solutions to tough challenges. Bloomberg Philanthropy's innovation teams program was created to provide cities with a method to address these barriers and deliver change more effectively to citizens using the tested successful innovation delivery approach, which I will speak about just in a little bit in outline form. Innovation teams, called I-teams, greatly reduce the risks associated with innovation and provide city leaders with assurance in their ability to develop and implement 
effective solutions to their highest priority problems. Innovation teams function as in-house innovation consultants, moving from one city priority to the next. Innovation teams support agency leaders and staff through a data-driven process to assess problems, generate responsive new interventions, develop partnerships, and deliver measurable results. We were invited, uh, and I should say Mayor Hodge's office was invited in September of 2014 as one of 80-some mayor's offices to apply for the second round of the Innovation Delivery Grant. Uh, you can only apply by invitation. One may not just apply because you feel like it. Uh, and we received uh, a, a good deal of direct encouragement um, in the month of September from various folks at Bloomberg Philanthropies to apply for this. They we are on their map. We were on their map then as a city that really is thinking hard about innovation and looking hard at the core services that we deliver and how we deliver them and how we can deliver them better. And they were very encouraged by that. So as we thought about what would we want to apply for, we looked very clearly to the city goals that, that you adopted uh, about this uh, time a year ago. Uh, and the one that we felt really unites uh, policymakers in Minneapolis, unites senior staff, and in, unites our residents is the goal of equity, uh, fair and just opportunities and outcomes for all people. And we know, of course, that there are many um, inequitable outcomes in Minneapolis across uh, across the board in in all sorts of uh, areas which the city of Minneapolis does not necessarily directly play in, what we thought uh, made good sense was to ask the question, is the city of Minneapolis delivering our core services, the core services that we deliver to our residents, and this is whether plowing uh, our streets or patching their potholes, uh, towing their cars, you know, maintaining their bike lanes, uh, inspecting, uh, doing housing inspections, residential inspections, uh, alley sweeps, um, small business licensing, you name it, the core functions of our city, are we delivering those functions in a geographically and racially equitable manner? I think that we all have gut feelings about that in some ways, but what we have not had here at the city is the capacity to really, in a systematic way, investigate that question and then really take that data and think in, in an innovative fashion about what solutions might be. So this was the what we proposed to Bloomberg Philanthropies, and we were very pleased to learn in late December that we were one of 12 cities out of the 80 some that were invited to apply across the country who were awarded the uh, grant. Um, we are in the company of cities like Los Angeles, uh, Boston, uh, and Seattle, among others. Um, we uh, were awarded more money than we asked for. So it's a sign, I think, that uh, they were very uh, encouraged by what it is that we um, proposed. And I think that uh, in addition, it, uh, what was appealing to them about our application was that it also builds on the culture of innovation and results management that we already have here in place in the city and have had for a number of years now. And also some of the data tools that we have coming online like the intelligent operations platform and the land management system. So really data sets and data tools that can be effectively mined to do this work. Uh, that is the um, that is the background. Um, so what uh, what we get uh, for uh, from Bloomberg Philanthropies is, of course, as I said, first of all, nine hundred thousand dollars a year for three years. This money may be used for personnel uh, and related expenses. And the innovation delivery model uh, calls for hiring uh, six individuals led by an innovation delivery director and then very others, other, other ones that uh, Mr. Kronk uh, can speak to. Um, we, uh, although the, um, the Bloomberg Philanthropies model I think is uh, geared toward a sort of traditional strong mayor system and so the application says that these positions will live in the mayor's office, the mayor will direct them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It was very clear that that model doesn't fit the hybrid shared governance model that we have here in Minneapolis. And so we contacted Bloomberg very early on and said, you need to understand our system of government a little bit better. It doesn't look like New York City. Um, and they said, great, thank you for educating us. And so we said, what, it makes sense to us. It, makes, it would work in our system of governance here to house these positions, should you award us this grant, in the city coordinator's office where they, they would act most appropriately. And that is the application we said we would like to submit to you. And they said, great, please do that. We're flexible. Go right ahead. So these uh, six individuals uh, led by the Innovation Delivery Director, uh, should you um, approve the creation of that position, will then live in the city coordinator's office. Um, in a, uh, the money may not 
be used for what they call the direct implementation of programmatic activities, which is to say solutions to the problems that we identify. We need to find other resources to deliver on the solutions, which I'll speak about in a minute. Uh, in addition to that, we get a variety of technical assistance. We get folks coming in several times a year directly from Bloomberg Philanthropies to work with our I team. We get a regular, I think bi-weekly uh, coaching calls from a consultant who works with them. We get a whole cohort of cities, both from the, the first sort of pioneer cohort that we can rely on, as well as the ones that are walking through this work with us together and other sorts of uh, training. Um, what is required of us is, first of all, the obvious stuff, uh, semi-annual reporting, significant progress on the goals that we're making, and then two things that I think are of the most interest uh, here to the council. First of all, there is a match requirement. It is a one to three match requirement over the three-year lifetime of the grant, which means that over the, the three years of the grant, we need to invest $900,000 in resources to match the 2.7 million. This needs to be broken up into halves. The first half needs to be uh, delivered by February 1, 2016, and the second half by February 1, 2017. Now, those match dollars there can be very, very flexible. Um, they can be simply resources that we invest in a solution that we identify. So we may have those resources already dedicated uh, in the budget, or the mayor may propose them in a subsequent budget. You may approve them in a subsequent budget, and those can count uh, toward what we're doing. We may raise them externally. Uh, they're, they're quite flexible about how the, uh, how the dollars uh, can be raised as long as they're simply not just sort of saying, well, we're going to take this percentage of this extant person's staff time and then apply it uh, to um, uh, to the to the solution, again. But this is money that we are essentially raising to implement uh, the uh, the uh, plans that uh, that we identify through the the innovation grant. Um, uh, secondly, we are required to move what the grant calls "quote unquote" some portion, so it's that specific, of the grant funded personnel to public funding by February 1, 2017. And this is clearly intended to make this sort of innovation delivery model uh, permanent in the city enterprise. Um, th that is uh, pretty much it. The next steps, aside from your taking the action here, um, and then uh, also uh, taking the action, the recommended action on Friday to improve the position of innovation delivery director, are to begin to identify uh, the priorities that we uh, want to look at. And, you know, there, there are many. Uh, I think the discussion right now uh, is whether to conduct some sort of citywide diagnostic first to surface the areas that are most ripe for reform or to work with those departments that are most ready to kind of leap right in and solve a problem. I think that's an open question right now. And once there is an innovation delivery director on board, which the grant requires uh, happen quickly by the end of February, then I think that uh, discussion will begin in earnest. And so uh, with that, I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Stiles, for that uh, overview and presentation. And um, this is a very exciting opportunity. Um, I will tell you, I've had a lot of questions about it um, from residents who are just curious, what, what might this mean, mm -hmm. you know, or they have looked at uh, things happening in other cities and are interested, yeah. does that mean we might try this or that? Um, so I think there is definitely a lot of interest. Um, before, I, I, I was hoping maybe we could talk a little bit about the position and kind of how that might be housed. I know I've had questions from mm -hmm. colleagues, and maybe that might be a little bit for Mr. Kronk. But before we do that, I wonder, just a couple questions on the match sure. piece. And I'm just I'm looking. I'm not seeing anybody with their, their tag up. So let me know if, if I'm speaking uh, uh, if other council members want to, to speak up here. But with the match, um, just so that I am understanding this, um, um, do we have to identify new dollars in the budget to meet the match requirement? Um, you know, so, uh, I just want to get a little bit better flavor of what yeah. could qualify. So, and for example, maybe in public works, uh, we didn't add new dollars to the budget, but we said we're going to take dollars from somewhere and we want to reprioritize them to do X or Th that's Y. A, that's a perfect example of how we could, how we could meet that match requirement. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I wonder then if perhaps uh, Mr. Kronk might want to uh, 
talk just, just a little bit about um, the position that um, did go through executive committee, the director position, when that person is envisioned to be on board, and who, how that person will report within our organizational structure, mm -hmm. and what's your thought on getting these other folks on board? Good morning, Chair Glidden, Council members. Um, in terms of the team that would be established if this grant were accepted, um, there would be six positions envisioned, uh, the first being the director of uh, the, uh, the I-team, and that would, position description would be um, part of what was recommended in the executive committee, and it's the only appointed position that is recommended. So um, this would be the leader of that team. Uh, they would report directly to the city coordinator, myself, um, and they would oversee five other staff. Those staff are envisioned to be two project managers, a data architect, and two business process and data analysts. Um, we have uh, job descriptions developed for those other five, and although they are not appointed positions, we would be able to go out with all six of those positions uh, early next week, uh, as soon as the council uh, takes action, if that were to be approved. Um, we're hoping to recruit for all six of those positions uh, simultaneously, but in an ideal situation, hire the director first um, and then have a pool of applicants for the other five positions so that the director, when they come on board, would be able to be part of um, determining who the other five positions would be. Okay. Um, questions from my colleagues? Oh, Councilmember Quincy. Uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you, Chair uh, Glidden, and uh, thank you, Mr. Stiles and Mr. Cronk joining us, it's a tremendous opportunity. So thank you for the work to bring this opportunity to us. I, I did wanna talk a little bit about the, uh, the match portion of it, uh, realizing that it may not be a, a, an additional appropriation that we're gonna have to be making. We can put together a lot of things. I think the real cost may be further out and it may be uh, a good op opportunity to use these grant funds to identify additional changes that we need to make in our enterprise. So there may be uh, changes we need to make within individual departments uh, or within individual management groups. So I don't wanna get fixed on the fact that it's gonna cost us $300,000. I wanna see how we're gonna use this money to effectively deliver services across our city in a much more equitable way and, uh, and use innovation. Uh, so from a pure cost point of view, it could be much more but it could be an investment that we should be making as a conscious decision as part of our budget process. And this will help guide us to make those appropriate decisions in the years. So I didn't wanna get hung up on the fact we're having to come up with 300,000. I wanted to say, well, man, this is a great opportunity to really figure out how we should invest and change our enterprise to deliver services better across our city. So that's, a, that's an important distinction I wanted to carry out. Um, I think I had another question uh, oh, it was on, on, the, on the work product. Uh, this isn't a decision making that Bloomberg Philanthropies is taking on. They're not approving the direction that we're taking. This is, if I'm correct, understanding. Um, they're just giving us the funding infrastructure to make these decisions by ourselves. These are Minneapolis problems and they demand Minneapolis solutions. So there's no uh, oversight on the part of Bloomberg. Is that correct? Uh, Chair Glidden, Councilmember Quincy, that's correct. I mean, there are there are semi-annual reporting requirements. They want to know what we're doing and how we're making progress on the goals that we set. Mm -hmm. uh, they view themselves very much as our consultants. So people that we go to with problems, with issues, with you know potential solutions. What do you think? How is this working in other cities? What have you seen? How we can adapt? How can we adapt this to Minneapolis? But in no way is this their signing off on our goals, on our priorities. That's I think correct. that's real important distinction to make uh, yeah. because I, I have it. And they're very, may I add that they're very explicit about that. Okay. They're very explicit that we are here to help you, to, 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 to give you, offer you guidance and expertise uh, and to support your internal I team that is carrying out your priorities. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess an extension of that, um, we're gonna be providing semi-annual updates to Bloomberg. I imagine through the coordinator's office, this council is gonna be able to see the work process not just the work product. That I would certainly steps imagine. Steps along so. the way. Yeah. That'll Absolutely. be important to do. Uh, the other thought was, can we share this information with other jurisdictions uh, within our own region? I mean, St. Paul could be a beneficiary from the work product that we do. 
uh, Duluth could be a beneficiary. I, I certainly think that's uh, I certainly think that's the case. Again, there are only 12 cities around the country, uh, and we are one of only two in the Midwest uh, that that uh, were selected in this round. So I think that this puts us uh, on a, on the leading edge of cities around the country, and it would make perfect sense for us then in that leadership position to share our lessons learned with other cities. That's true, and uh, I was also thinking this doesn't directly apply to Minneapolis Public School District, for example, mm -hmm. but there could be innovations within there that we could take from our own planning department or from our housing department or whatever and say, hey, this is something that you guys really need to understand. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to make sure that we have our connections, not with within the enterprise exclusively, but with our jurisdictional partners within the county, uh, school district, park board, et cetera. Yeah, and uh, Chair Glidden and Vice President, uh, Council Member Quincy, um, the, the creation and uh, extension of partnerships uh, is one of the key, um, link, they're, they're one of the keys to the innovation delivery approach, in fact. So I, I imagine that our consultants will be pretty insistent on our doing precisely that. Thank you very much, Ms. Madam Chair. Obviously, I'm very supportive of this and excited to begin the work. Thank you. Council Member Fry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Stiles and Mr. Kronk. Um, I also think this is a wonderful opportunity. So first off, thanks for all the work that went into getting us to this point. Um, while I see Council Member Yang is in queue next, uh, I'm a little disappointed that Council President Johnson isn't here because I know uh, I've, I've heard quite a few heated passionate uh, rants from her about sort of geographical inequity, which based on the makeup of our city is one and the same, uh, oftentimes is, is racial inequity. Uh, but I, I certainly will let Council Member Yang speak for North Minneapolis. Um, and uh, I had a minor question, which I think Council Member Quincy already touched on, but I don't know if it makes any difference. Uh, but the when the money, I think it's the 900000 per year over three years comes in, does that come in in the form of a Bloomberg consultant's team or does that come in in the form of money that we then subcontract out to hire the consultants? Uh, it comes in in the form of dollars that okay. we use to pay the salaries of the six people on our staff and meet other related expenses. Thank you. Council Member Yang. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice President. Um, you know, I just have a question with regards to, uh, um, I guess, the grant over three years. Um, I mean, it's it's a substantial amount of money, and uh, I'm wondering, I mean, what's, so we get all this stuff, but I mean, for the Bloomberg Philanthropies folks, I mean, what do they get out of this? <laughs> That's a great question, uh, Chair Glidden and Council Member Yang. I think what they get out of it is the satisfaction of their passion for innovation. Um, they, I've met some of the folks from, from Bloomberg Philanthropies, and Mayor Hodges has had the, um, the privilege of meeting former Mayor Bloomberg himself, and they are simply passionate about this. They genuinely believe that cities are where, um, where we can most transform people's lives. Um, and that have the greatest capacity uh, in government for innovating, um, have the most flexibility and have the most number of people dedicated to the mission um, on a regular basis and closest to the people. And I think they simply are absolutely convinced and passionate that this is you know, a transformative space uh, for, in the lives of people. City government is a transformative space and how we deliver services is a transformative space in the lives of people. And I think that's what they're in it for. And um, if I may just add a little bit more uh, to Council Member Fry's point, um, you know, one of the big issues that uh, I've seen uh, in the past year that I've been here is just uh, the, the issue of towing uh, in the city of Minneapolis and just the inequities uh, around that. And specifically, um, you know, and unfortunately, I mean, I think they've uh, pitted uh, places with uh, denser populations, um, including North Minneapolis against, let's say, um, you know, Ward 13. And, um, you know, just kind of the, the towing that happens in certain areas uh, and the towing that doesn't happen in certain areas. And, um, you know, I, I'd love to see some type of resolution on that specifically just because, um, you know, I mean, from my perspective, uh, the folks up in Ward 5, certainly when they get tagged and towed, um, it causes a heavier burden on them financially and economically than, you know, um, other folks. And, uh, you know, I just I think, I mean, there has to be a better solution than what we're doing at this point, because uh, it's certainly, um, you know, 
I mean, within public works, they make certain assumptions about where they tow and where they don't tow and those sorts of things. And I, I think, I mean, underlying those sorts of things are just, you know, um, assumptions that really just uh, hurt a lot of people. And, you know, I mean, create these sorts of inequities that, um, I mean, we as government can solve, I hope, with something like this or, you know, anything else. But, I mean, certainly this is one thing that I'd like to um, get off my plate, if you will. Thank you. Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Madam Vice President. I just want to say how excited I am about this. Um, before taking office, I worked at four different government agencies at the local, regional, and state level, and experience there, and then now as a policymaker, how hard it is to find resources for innovation, and even for data, you know, even for taking the kind of careful data-driven approach that we should be taking to policymaking. Uh, finding those resources is often challenging, even in a time now where we're in economic recovery. So it's really exciting for the city to be able to bring in these outside resources to focus on data and innovation. I think that we will be seeing the benefits of this for many years to come. Hopefully it will be something that saves the city money over time as we'll be able to hopefully be more efficient and again, um, you know, more proactive in addressing some of these uh, regional and racial inequities that that hurt the city economically. Um, so I'm, I think this is just such a fantastic opportunity for the city. I'm really proud of the city of Minneapolis for being a leader in this way and thanks for everyone's great work. Thank you. Um, I am not seeing other comments for my colleagues. I'm going to go ahead and move this item. And just as a note, I um, may have a just a, a short staff direction after this that relates more to process and just making sure we've got a good understanding of process around grants. But um, uh, I will go ahead and move approval of uh, this item, which is accepting the grant award authorizing appropriate officials to enter into a three-year agreement and approving a resolution that increases our 2015 appropriation and revenue budgets for the city coordinator department by $900,000. And just maybe as a, a short comment, um, I, I really appreciate Councilmember Bender um, bringing up her own personal experiences and kind of relating to this opportunity. I um, remember having many conversations with our former city coordinator, Stephen Bosacker, about innovation and, um, and creativity and how hard it is, especially with, um, in times of, uh, which we have gone through of reducing staff, having to focus so heavily on just getting the job done that uh, there isn't time in sort of your mind space, let alone just your physical space of getting stuff done to uh, produce creative, innovative solutions. And I know our staff have that capacity within them. They just don't have a way to release it and have it uh, taken to the next level. And that is what I hope happens here. It's not that these six, five people are going to be the innovators. What I really hope is that they are able to take what is the great capacity and ideas that exist within our city and our city workers and help bring those to fruition and help prioritize them and move them to the next level. And so um, I'm really excited about that and how that may help um, promote kind of a better sense of uh, well-being and satisfaction with our own city workforce and seeing some of their ideas uh, rise to the fore. Um, so with that, um, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed. And that item is approved. Um, I had one uh, just uh, related item um, that was brought up, I think, in one of our other committees, and that's just that um, uh, our formal process within the city is that for grants that meet certain qualifications um, that uh, they come forward for a formal city council approval process. And as I understand it, this has been sort of a series of directions over time. Um, so we're not talking about maybe one direction. And there's also been comments, I will just say, not related to this, but over the years from city staff about whether that direction perhaps needs to be refreshed. So on the one hand, I think it's very important for there to be a connection with policymakers and an understanding of sort of what are we actually applying for and if we get it, can we accept it? You know, do we have the capacity to accept it? 
And then there's another issue, I would say kind of the opposite side of this, which is that we want to encourage our city uh, workforce to seek outside funding opportunities, um, leverage our opportunities within the city, and sometimes going through the city process, which takes several weeks at the least, um, is not the most efficient and best way to do that. So with that, I am going to um, do a staff direction uh, to the city coordinator in cooperation with other um, uh, staff that touch the grant uh, process to review our existing policies and practices that relate to applying for and accepting outside funding and to um, uh, review whether there should be a refresh and update to uh, that guidance and come back to this uh, committee with some response to that. And so I can work with the city coordinator on what might be an appropriate report back date, but um, I just think this might be a good way to make sure we have a better handle on the process that supports um, good oversight, but not uh, restraining our ability to apply for good opportunities. So with that, uh, any discussion of that motion? Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And that I, uh, staff direction is approved. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, we now turn to reports of committees, and the first is uh, Community Development and Regulatory Services with Councilmember Goodman. Thank you, Madam Vice President. There are 18 items on our agenda for pr approval tomorrow. Item number one is a resolution giving preliminary and final approval for a bond issuance for uh, the Hiawatha Academies project. Item number two is moving forward with Green Homes North round four. This is about 13 projects located on the north side funding uh, for 13 more houses. I will note that some of the original houses are now selling in the 200000 to $220,000 range, which is just a huge victory. Um, so we're hoping to get to the number of 100 in the next couple of years. Item three is the tobacco dealers e-cigarette sampling ordinance change. This would just simply allow sampling of e-cigarettes um, in, in businesses that sell them. Item number four is uh, the regular liquor business and gambling license applications. Five, six, and seven are all rental license um, retentions with conditions. Item number eight is a reappointing Judge Jim Rosenbaum and Daisy Nigan and appointing Barra Toke to replace another resident on the MPHA Board of Commissioners. Item number nine is a bond issuance for the McNamara Center. Item 10 is a reciprocal access and maintenance agreement for parcel A. We're hoping to break ground on the senior housing project on parcel A by River West yet this year, but in the meantime, we're going to have continue the existing reciprocal agreement. Item number 11 is extending Praxis Foods exclusive development rights for approximately four months till April 30th. Item number 12 is accepting some money from Hennepin County and the Ackerberg Group to remo remove asphalt and seed a city-owned lot. Item 13 is um, submitting deed applications. Item 14 is approving about $260,000 in emergency shelter grant services funding. So this is not for capital, but for service. This is the set aside for service. Item 15 is accepting money from MHFA for our rehab support program. Item 16 is um, reallocating money within CPED to both the home program and the affordable housing trust fund. This is money that was from those purposes dedicated back to those purposes. Item number 17 is a big deal and no one seems to be talking about it. Um, so I'll just point out this is um, executing our option to purchase a large number of lots, about 40 some odd lots, to combine them with the 50 some odd lots that we already own in order to start working on the Humboldt Greenway again. So this is a redevelopment plan that started when I first started on the council and uh, stalled due to the recession, although a lot of the projects were built out there. This is trying to then have the city again re-coordinate an effort to build homes in that location. And item number 18 is a good news story. This is accepting a legacy award grant from the Historical Society for the Hollywood Theater Project. Uh, with that, I'll answer questions on items one through 18. All right, any questions, seeing none, we'll go to the next report from Health, Environment, and Community Engagement. With that, Chair, Councilmember Gordon. Thank you very much, Madam Vice President. The Health, Environment, and Community Engagement Committee will be bringing forward three items. 
Uh, the first is approving uh, this round of appointments and reappointments to the Minneapolis Public Health Advisory Committee. Uh, the second is authorizing a $100,000 increase to a contract with Tubman to provide case management services for youth. And the third is authorizing execution of a contract with the University of Minnesota uh, for veterinarian services at our animal care and control facility. And I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Councilmember Gordon. Um, next, we have public safety, civil rights, and emergency management. With that, Chair Councilmember Yang. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice President. Uh, we have three items today. The first two items uh, are to accept uh, thirty thousand dollars from the Joyce Foundation and the Target Foundation to be used to support the position of community engagement no. coordinator and other project costs. And the third item is to authorize an amendment to a contract agreement with West Publishing Corporation, West Government Services for access to a database. Uh, searches for investigative purposes and accepting a two-year extension and increasing by one hundred and five thousand dollars one hundred and five hundred thousand dollars for a full five-year contract period uh, cost which is two hundred and fifty five thousand dollars payable from the Minneapolis Police Department general fund all right thank you councilmember Yang um, next we have transportation <coughs> and public works with that chair councilmember Wright uh, thank you, Madam Vice President. Uh, the committee will be forwarding 13 items for full council consideration. Uh, item one is the 54th Street West reconstruction project. Item two is a passage resolution ordering the installation of uh, parking restrictions at 6th Street South to meet state aid rules. Item three is an easement agreement with the Minnesota Sports Facility Authority. Uh, item four is an easement agreement with Hennepin County. Item five is the 26th Avenue Street reconstruction and renovation project. Item six is the 9th Street, 11th Street, North, and South, 12th Street, North and South, and 7th Avenue North Street resurfacing project. Item seven is the 2nd Street North, uh, 21st, 30th, 33rd Avenue North, 42nd Avenue, and Bloomington Avenue South, and Minnesota 62 Frontage Road Street resurfacing projects. Uh, the following items are referred to Ways and Means Committee. Uh, item eight is an RFP for water distribution system leakage assessment program. Item nine is the granulated activated carbon filter pro um, pilot project. Item 10 is a 24th Street East Snelling Avenue Street reconstruction project. Uh, there within the committee, there were some questions regarding uh, coordination with CPED and timing of grants. Um, the committee um, uh, public works folks talked with CPED and they concur that we should move forward uh, per both departments recommendation. Item 11 is the Minnehaha Avenue Street reconstruction project. Item 12 is the uh, Nawada Boulevard Minnehaha Avenue reconstruction project. And an, an amendment will be distributed Friday, removing two parcels from the assessment role uh, for that project um, um, based on analysis of the uh, staff. And then item 13 is a low bid for concrete idea incorporated. I will stand for questions, uh, Madam President, or Vice President. Thank you, Council Member Reich. Um, next we have the Ways and Means Committee agenda with Council Member Quincy. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice President. There are 12 items on the Ways and Means agenda for your consideration on Friday. The uh, first is uh, our two legal settlements. Uh, then there's also a uh, uh, authorizing the city to join in a friend of the court brief in support of the uh, president's executive action on immigration. Uh, also a from the uh, city attorney's office recommendation to uh, execute an agreement with the state of Minnesota for the Minnesota court data services. Then we have a uh, acceptance of a the certified local government uh, grant award for this from the state historic preservation office. We also have the appointments uh, of a number of um, council member appointments uh, to the capital long range improvement committee. Uh, the sixth item is the uh, 2014 fourth quarter gift acceptance uh, resolution and acceptance. We have a authorization and negotiation and execution of an amendment to the parking lot lease uh, contracts with for these three um, MnDOT uh, parking lots under I-94. The eighth item is the uh, is a execution of an amendment to a contract for a traffic maintenance building renovation project, and also we have a uh, execution of an amendment uh, to a city contract for the Hiawatha Liquid AC Tank project. Uh, the tenth item is the acceptance of the uh, Twin Cities United Way grant uh, for, to help um, the preparation and writing of the Cradle to K report. Um, 
The 11th item uh, relates uh, partially to our earlier presentation in the Committee of the Whole, was the uh, approval of a proposed position of Director Innovation Delivery Team. And the final item is the approval of a settlement agreement between the City of Minneapolis and Comcast, as well as a passage of a re resolution conditionally transferring Comcast's uh, franchise agreement uh, in Minneapolis to Great Land Connections and the change in their corporate uh, governance and structure. Uh, those are the 12 items. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Councilmember Quincy. I am not seeing any questions. Um, and uh, there is one just note I want to make for council members relating to Friday which is that we will be welcoming a delegation from our sister city of Harbin, China, on Friday. And we will have a uh, short reception that begins at 9.15 across the hall. And then right before the council meeting, uh, we will have a ceremony uh, thanking them and welcoming them to the city of Minneapolis. So um, just wanted to let you all know about that. And with that, I believe we have concluded with our agenda and we are adjourned. Thank you.